Memes are everywhere. Sometimes they're just throwaway gags. This is Sparta! Jokes that flare into existence and vanish without a trace. Sometimes they stick around for a while and can be a powerful social motivator. In the age of the internet, a meme can get people to think about a subject in new and bizarre ways, and there's a great deal of responsibility when one creates a powerful, widely utilized meme. In the right hands, an inside joke revolving around a hastily made movie tie-in game can turn into a technical, highly competitive esport. This is the story of Shrek Super Slam. And no, we're not kidding. <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. Oh, What's going on here? After the breakout success of the first Shrek film, DreamWorks had a potential franchise on their hands. So naturally, the company set about creating every tie-in imaginable. Toys, collectibles, clothes, and of course, video games. Apart from games directly tied into the first two Shrek films, after the release of Shrek 2, they also came out with a pretty unique fighting game. Developed by the now-defunct Shaba Games, Shrek Super Slam mixes the 3D movement and combat of an arena fighter with the stocks, platforms, and multiplayer shenanigans of platform fighters like Super Smash Bros. The way you win a game of Shrek Super Slam is different than most other fighting games. Instead of knocking an opponent out of a stage or depleting their life bar, players have to fill up a slam meter, which allows them to land a special attack that takes away one stock. On the surface, the game is something of an outlier in the never-ending list of mediocre video games based on movies or TV shows. Just like an onion, once you start peeling the skin of Shrek Super Slam, you'll discover something incredible, a game that has layers and layers of tech. But as players started experimenting, they discovered some pretty cool techniques. Players could drastically increase their movement speed through a technique known as shield cancelling, which reduces end lag on certain actions, allowing them to get moves out more quickly. Shield cancelling also unlocks the game's important, and wonderfully named, Crumpet Dashing, which gives you a lightning fast air dash so you can close the distance on an opponent. Just like with Super Smash Bros. Melee, these techniques turned a silly party game into a highly technical competitive fighter, and the first to master these techniques would become gods of the game. It was rushed so badly that for every wave dash in Melee, there's free, free text to be discovered in, in Shrek. There's jab combos that can align with other jab combos to become different jab combos. You can do jab combos while grabbing. You can do, you can cancel pretty much all moves, which leads to like all different things. There's just so much to find because it's it's a, it's a buggy mess, but it's just nothing. It fundamentally breaks the whole experience. But as with most games that are fundamentally broken. There's one thing that comes along with that, infinites. In Shrek Super Slam, there are multiple characters that can set up combos with little to no chance of escape that guarantee a full slam meter and a guaranteed stock. However, rather than shying away from or outright banning infinites, Shrek Super Slam leans right into it. To win a match, you need to land four infinites in a row while preventing your opponent from doing the same. At this point, you may be asking yourself one important question. Why? Why would someone invest so much time in discovering all these techniques for a meme game? To tell you that story, we need to understand the ways that Shrek epitomizes meme culture. Shrek is an artifact of the early 2000s. From the opening scene set to Smash Mouth's All-Star to references to The Matrix, Shrek is covered with tropes from its time period, which is exactly what makes it so perfect as a template on which to build memes. For the most part, Shrek's relevance in pop culture today is carried almost entirely through memes shared on the internet. So for years, Shrek Super Slam was just something of a joke. But how do you meme on something that is, in its very nature, a meme itself? Surely, the only course of action is to go in the exact opposite direction. What if Shrek Super Slam was taken really, really seriously? Well that all began in 2014, when a dedicated subreddit for the game was created. After a little bit of time passed, a user named Snowman Eater began flooding the subreddit with actual guides, still playing into the joke, but providing real information on how to improve at the game. People decided to take the joke one step further by launching Shrek Boards, a forum parodying the popular Smash Boards, which for many years was the home of the competitive Smash scene. Slowly, Shrek Boards stopped being about the meme and started to be about the competition. 
There was one player who dove headfirst into the game's deep pool of combos and movement options. Their name was Meowmix. Known at the time as Boasting Toast, Meowmix was largely responsible for turning Shrek boards into a serious foreman for tech discussion. He's credited with discovering and refining many of the techniques used by top players today, unlocking new options, and pushing the skill ceiling higher than ever. With the COVID-19 pandemic, every fighting game has had to learn how to cultivate an online scene. But the players of Shrek Super Slam made Netplay their home years before. Just as they embraced the game's glitches and infinite combos, the community accepted that in order to fill its tournament matches, matches would have to take place online, because the two geographical hubs for the scene, the Midwestern United States and the United Kingdom, are pretty far apart. Like with any fighting game, this can have a significant impact on the way that characters play and the reliability of combos. But most players understand that that's what you sign up for when you choose a Shrek Arena Fighter from 2005 as your game of choice. The game's top 10 players include a mix of US and European players who battle it out online on a regular basis. While the online community helped develop Shrek Super Slam into an actual competitive scene, there had always been a few players trying to make the game happen at a local level. Because of its similarities to Smash, being offbeat fighting games that were released on the GameCube, there were some organizers running side tournaments at Smash events. It was through one of these early events that one of the game's top players today, Squeechu, found the game. I got into the game because a UK tournament organizer, Flick, basically he was getting people to boost numbers. And I remember saying, absolutely not. This game is a joke. This game is so stupid. Uh, just looking at it, I never touched it. I was 13 at the time, so there was a lot of... Uh, I was very against making myself into some sort of meme. But eventually, the first rankings came out, the original rankings for Shrek. And he had gotten himself 15th place on the ranking, which, in hindsight, anyone that could just push A and B was going to get top 20. Um, 30th place played the game uh, like four times, and I think one of the players didn't play in a single tournament. I was like, oh, I, pro I could probably get top five in like a week. And he, obviously, I'm guessing he sensed that there was a chance for me to get, get me involved. He said, oh, you probably couldn't get top ten uh, ever. And that was when I just sort of like, was like, all right, I'll prove you wrong. In the early era, the game was dominated by Meowmix. His knowledge and experience helped to unlock all of Shrek Super Slam's secrets, and Meowmix was able to claim the throne with little competition. Squeechu's rise to fame happened when he took a win off the king, taking a full set over Meowmix at time to get Shreked. Unfortunately, Squeechu's hopes of becoming the next number one would be short-lived, as soon after his victory, a new Goliath appeared on the horizon. Provider of Souls' debut at the game's first major online event, absolutely pissed off, was unquestionable. In the online space, new players are still coming to the game and fighting to challenge the status quo. At Tyler Shrek Super Slam Tournament Part 2, a new contender known as Scrub Jr. would not only take a set off of the number 2 ranked Squeechu, but would also become one of the few players to ever claim victory in a tournament match over Provider of Souls. That legendary win helped to cement Scrub Jr. as number 3 on the game's long-running overall rankings. She currently sits just ahead of a wave of new players, including Nomeo and The Boy Who Cried Wolf, who've been practicing regularly to try and take the crown. Today, the irony of the Shrek Super Slam scene has been fully embraced. Shrek Boards has been largely abandoned for a community Discord server, and newcomers jumping in to share in the joke will find a group of players committed to pushing the game they love to its absolute limits. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason, Foxy, Lyra, Mav, Nate, Nathan, Oshayo, Sierra, Shampoo, Weeaboo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, Muki, Daniel, and Juke for being Diamond supporters. Thanks for the continued support, guys. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below, or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.